It's every woman's worst nightmare. And it's all caught on tape. You hear about an abduction, but it's not often that you see it. You are watching the abductor, the kidnapper, forcibly take her. You see the violence. The stunning video shocks people all over the world. Incredible story. Gone in 30 seconds. It's a pain. It's a pain that does not go away. But there's a twist. The victim developed her own strategy. November 2nd, 2014, just before 9.40 p.m. Germantown, Philadelphia. It's your usual quiet Sunday night. This is Green Street. This is Coulter Street here. A surveillance camera captures two shadowy figures as they cross the street. You see him shaking the girl's hand. Doesn't seem like anything at first. But this is more than a handshake. This is a kidnapping. She was screaming at the top of her lungs, saying, help, help. You see someone being dragged against their will for unknown purposes and probably very dangerous and nefarious purposes. The young woman fights for her life. But her abductor, a hooded figure dressed in black, overpowers her. It was sickening, unforgettable. At one point, the woman tumbles to the sidewalk before she's forced into a car. And it all happens in a matter of seconds. This whole situation literally took place in 30 seconds. Then, another shock. It was a crazy sound. The car was like kind of rocking. I heard gunshots. The kidnapper speeds away with the woman still inside the car. Every second turns into a race against the clock. You don't know if the victim knows the assailant. Where was he going to take her? What was he going to do with her? Around 9.30 PM on November 2nd, Dwayne Fletcher runs out to the store for a snack. The only other person on the street is a young woman just ahead of him. It's so dark, and when I got behind her, she just kept looking back. So I was like, oh, OK, well, let me get on the other side of the street so she can feel a little bit safe. The woman walks out of his view, but minutes later, he hears a scream. Dwayne has an awful feeling it's the same woman, so he immediately dials 911. And I was like, I believe somebody's getting kidnapped. It wasn't for sure a thing, it was just going with my inside gut. Dwayne runs towards the screams. From a block away, he sees the woman being dragged down the street and forced into a car. It was like a lot of commotion inside of the car. And the windows just exploded. And I think she probably got shot. When the police arrive, they can't find any bullets or casings. They don't think the woman was shot. They think she broke the glass on purpose. Her cell phone was laying in the streets. Her glasses was laying in the streets. She's left them clues. And with her cell phone, they quickly identify her. 22-year-old nurse's aide, Carlicia Freeland Gaither. She comes from a big family and is the oldest of seven close siblings and was just on her way home from a family gathering. You're walking down the street, mind your business, and somebody can come and just grab you. This is emotional for me. Sorry. How is it possible that in just 30 seconds, she's gone? The one thing police are certain of is they have a fighter on their hands. This girl was very brave and attempted to do whatever she could to fight back. Carlicia left the phone there as a way for you to track her down. She's an intelligent girl, yes. By Monday, November 3rd, 
A massive manhunt is underway for Carlisha's kidnapper and the sedan he forced her into. And video of her chilling abduction makes worldwide news. The woman was dragged down the street in Philadelphia. Carlisha Freeland Guider, son ravisseur présumé, est recherché par l'État. Police and Carlisha's family plead for help. Please give her back. Just give her back. Please give her back. It's every parent's worst nightmare. It's a parent. Your biggest fear is for someone to hurt your child. You always want to protect them. And the moment that you can't, Then, 24 hours into the search, police get their first break. A man is caught on camera using Carlisha's ATM card. The bank video is recorded the morning after Carlisha is abducted at 6.01 a.m. Monday, November 3rd, in Aberdeen, Maryland, 80 miles south of Philadelphia. Just minutes later, at 6.03 a.m., the man is caught on camera again. The person believed to be the suspect walking through a gas station convenience store in Maryland. Then, on Tuesday, November 4th, 48 hours into the kidnapping, a woman who lives five miles away from Aberdeen comes forward. She finds some strange things in her driveway. A cut zip tie food wrappers, broken glass, and a receipt. Police track the receipt to a supermarket and more video. Turns out the video is from the day of Carlisha's abduction at a supermarket in Philadelphia. Lucky for police, the man's face is clearly visible. But none of the videos show Carlisha so where is she? I see her in there. It was my biggest fear. It was very difficult. And we were preparing for the worst. She was dead. She was gone. Three days into the abduction, on November 5th, police finally identify Carlisha's abductor, 37-year-old Delvin Barnes. And they alert the media that Barnes, who has a long history of violent crime, is the suspect in another abduction in Virginia just one month earlier. A 16-year-old Richmond girl who narrowly escaped with her life. He raped her, then poured bleach and gasoline on her and began digging her grave. What if Carlisha faces the same fate? Her entire family prays, willing their beloved sister and daughter to stay strong. Carlisha is extremely smart. I know she will find her way because that's what she did. Three days after Carlisha is abducted, police, who have worked around the clock to find her, finally get the lead they need from the Virginia dealership where Delvin Barnes got his car. It turns out that the dealer, for some financial concerns, had placed a GPS device on the car. Minutes later, they locate the car in a parking lot. The car is parked at a shopping mall in Jessup, Maryland. 120 miles from where Carlisha is kidnapped, the rear passenger window is missing, covered with a piece of plastic. When Delvin Barnes moves from the back of the car into the driver's seat, FBI and ATF agents swarm in and find Carlisha inside. I remember a whole bunch of yelling, and I was still kind of confused. How did y'all find me? Carlisha Freeland? has been rescued. Her abductor has been arrested. Barnes is held on federal charges of kidnapping and assault and attempted murder of the 16-year-old from Virginia. He's a vicious predator. Uh, he's off the streets, and hopefully, he'll be in jail for the rest of his life. Carlisha is checked at a local hospital, then reunited with family. When they allowed me to walk into the room and Carlisha saw me, it was too emotional for me. <laughs> I've never been 
so happy in my life. The unimaginable 72-hour ordeal leaves Carlicia traumatized. I was thinking, is this how I'm going to die? Carlicia's abduction was completely random. When Barnes first approaches her, he pretends to ask for directions. But when he shakes her hand, she knows something is wrong. As I try to pull away, he gripped tighter. And he wouldn't let go of my hand. Somehow, in the horrifying 30 seconds that follow, as she's dragged down the street and realizes she's being kidnapped, Carlicia comes up with a plan. I threw my cell phone on the ground with my glasses. Hopefully somebody will see it and know that I was there, that I was trying to get home. Then, when Barnes forces her into his car, she tries to escape. Under his seat, I see a hammer. I hit him with the hammer. It was blood everywhere. I thought, because it's so quiet, that he passed out because he, he was holding his head. So I hit the window and tried to get out. The window shattered. And I thought that was safe. I was free. He turns around and, and pulled me back in. I wanted to know if he was going to kill me or if he was going to rape me. Or both. As they drive out of Philadelphia, Carlicia's world passes by. I can see still out the window, and I can see my home. I can see my job. It's like my life was passing me for my eyes. Barnes knows the police will be looking for him, but he's prepared. He has a pile of license plates he keeps swapping out. I can hear him switching them, like when we stop. She hears all of this from inside the trunk of his car. Barnes uses a zip tie to handcuff her, and when he's not assaulting her, makes her hide in the trunk. The seat, he can put me in a trunk not by taking me out the car, but in the car. So he'll put the seat down and I'll crawl in the trunk, and then he'll put the seat up. So <sighs> sorry. <laughs> Five years later, it's still difficult for Carlicia to talk about. But she also knows how brave she was, and that another woman might not have had her strength. I'm happy he chose me, because when I think about somebody else, I wouldn't want to put them through that. When police locate the car in the Maryland parking lot, it turns out they're just in time. Barnes was moments away from stealing a car, so his sedan couldn't be tracked. He said that we needed another car because he was running out of license place to switch. Finally, Carlicia is safe. In 2016, Barnes is sentenced to 35 years. It's difficult for her family to see him in court. I think about what he did to my granddaughter. He's a monster. I just want to talk to him. Why? The evil things that he's done to people? It's hard. Carlicia is now a mom, and she can't stop thinking about the fact that Barnes is a parent too. He has a daughter. And Carlicia wishes she could say something to her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry she had to see that. But Carlicia realizes that if her kidnapping wasn't caught on tape, she might not be alive. And even if it's hard to watch, she hopes her story inspires people. I just hope they could just really learn from my story to not give up, to keep fighting, 